Good morning, I'm Scott Rudd, the Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Joe Malandrino with The Street, and together we bring you the morning call. Scott, which should have been a relatively quiet holiday week, we have a lot going on. We had Chinese interest rate cuts, the ECB announced another asset program, and then uh, Bank of England just took down the rate another quarter of a percent. So, you know, it's kind of a lot to look at. And my question is, do you think this will be enough to sustain sort of the run that we've seen over the past couple of days? Well, right now the futures are getting another push, so I think... <clears throat> Sorry, anyone caught short from last week, a little on edge here. You know, I think if uh, the central bank would have cut a half, you would have right. had a, a bigger response, a, a bigger squeeze. I think with what we saw this morning, it's going to try and keep things intact because lately and over the last week, we've had nothing but bad news. All growth slowing around the world type news and the markets acted well. So with this finally out of the way, you know, maybe we could take a breather. My oscillator, my trading oscillator is like plus 80. That's the highest overbought reading we've had since I think at any point this year. So to be chasing the market up here, you know, I, I think it's a little bit uh, hard or a right. tough game to play. And we also have a lot of data that we have to look at today and what's going to be a relatively thinly traded market because we have so many people off the desk, but we have a ton of job data today. We also have the employment number tomorrow. We have Natty inventory and oil inventory and also same store sales. And everyone wants to see how well the consumer is actually going to hold up. So there's a lot to look at. And in a thin tape, that's really scary. So how are you mm. positioned? What levels are you guys looking at? Well, let's take a look at the chart of the SPX. Let's go right here. We'll take a look at the, the, the macro version. First of all, you know, it, it's everyone complicates this so much, but if you look at it, there are two macro patterns here that formed this year. One was uh, the head and shoulders top pattern after we saw a really big move from December. So right there, that was your macro buy and hold until things started changing into the second quarter. Then you had your move lower. Then we had this inverted head and shoulders, the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder. You take a closer look. You know, the actual whole measured move of this pattern takes you up to about 1380 to 1390, actually no, closer to 400, because if you look here, this uh, is about, you know, just say 1270 to 1330. How many handles is that? That's about 60. So that takes you, you know, up into this zone, and this zone is, you know, just happens to be where we're getting close to. So this was the EU summit day. This is when we ignited above this small little inside range above this uh, 1335. And then we were able to take out recent resistance, you know, last week, you know, these two days, or actually this week, because it feels like last week, Monday, Tuesday. So use this as your pivot. This is 1374. We're above it now. Your next really major resistance zone comes in right around this 1388. If we see 1388 or thir like anywhere between 1385 and 1395 within the next two sessions, I think you sell that, take some profits. Let's see what kind of rest we have. But overall, this potent move to the upside is probably enough for us to continue at some point later this year. All right, moving along to the sector spotlight, we're going to look at two bank names and gold and silver, which we haven't spoken about in a while. But these are the areas that really get impacted by macroeconomic data. So let's kick it off with JP Morgan. We're looking at some key resistance levels here. And I think despite the bad headlines that's experienced over the past month or two that fundamentally things have not changed and this is probably one of the most well run of the biggest brokers and at this point you've had your bounce off the lows and i think some of the headlines are pretty much behind us so mm -hmm. you're not seeing it as an obsession for a while jp morgan every single day was an obsession and now you just look at the pattern here jp morgan you had a nice little bounce off the lows if you were prepared for it i remember we were in here when they finally announced a 4.2 billion dollar loss versus two and that's when you rallied rallied back up into uh, resistance. And now we're going sideways here. So sideways is good. Sideways is what consolidates and digests a move off the low. So I would say if you're in it, just be in tier one. And if the market continues to act well at some point this year, it gets above this uh, 3680, maybe on really good earnings and tries to fill some of this gap. So for right now, it, it's not really a headwind, but I don't right. expect it to be a tailwind. It's just really interesting. We mentioned this last week when we spoke about the financials that even though the amount of the loss has been raised and some people have been talking about $9 billion. I think a New York Times headline had mentioned that. The fact that they're announcing larger numbers and the uncertainty is coming out of it, you're right. seeing them either move or consolidate. And I think that's the biggest overall theme for the market. Right, anyway. mechanical. Right, <laughs> yeah. tactical. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Moving along to Goldman Sachs, let's take a look at that one. That performed really well on Tuesday. Yeah, Goldman Sachs is actually one of the banks that were able to break above oh. the lower pivot. So not only did you get a trade-off support, you know, we talked about 90-60s being big support, and it didn't break, and it held. So you know what, you revisit that. That's how you switch gears as a trader. Some guys saw that the support or the macro support was holding like in most things, and you got a bounce. And if you look here, actually you got a little bit more than, you know, just a bounce here, because some people would have thought if it was that weak, it would not have been held by this resistance, or it would have, you know, not been able to get above it. And then on Tuesday, you saw it break above this uh, 97.60. So it's 
getting above this lower pivot. So that tells you there's really not much in its way until you get to A, this little area where the gap is, or B, even a gap fill. So for right now, it's in motion for higher prices. I wouldn't chase it up here. You know, you have um, 98.77, which is um, Friday's high to, to write down, use that as a pivot. And um, I guess it's the first day back, so if you're seeing some technical <laughs> difficulties out there, just bear with it. Like no, you're we really are. not hung over. Really, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> technical difficulty. Yeah, see? that's not the black hole in your head. Anyway, <laughs> moving along to gold, we haven't spoken about this one in a while. I guess without Alex here. Right, well, where used to be our gold go to? Well, I've been, I've been speaking about it, but it's mm -hmm. been frustrating because right. we've had this these two trends. You had to pull off the highs. So when gold was 1,900 an ounce or so, we've come down to major support we've held that 1530 area so many times we held 148.50 so many times but every time it gets to this intermediate trend line if you're trying to play for a breakout above it because when it breaks out above it it's sometimes a lot of fun to trade because it goes quickly you know it's been held so if you go to the chart of gld you will see you know take a look here i'll give you a big a bigger look you know here's your snapshot okay on an intermediate level this is that 148 half that held here held again held again and now look where we are right back to this intermediate trend line that's been controlling this move that's been containing the bulls and the upside momentum for almost uh what is this this was uh, late february so that's a multi-month here so if we could finally get above this trend line and close above it with some kind of velocity you know then your next real level is 162 and then 166 and if the the gold bugs have their way they're still saying that we could take out these highs at some point this year I am not a gold bug. I am a gold trader. So this is level one resistance, two, three. Let's see if we can finally take it out. And today, if they're a little bit upset that the ECB did not do, you know, just say a half, I would say short term tactically, watch the low from Tuesday. So I would say as long as it holds above this gap and as long as it stays above 156.77, you will see some momentum long stay there. And then potentially here is your ignition point. So here is your, you know, here's your stop right. and here's your add. Now, what about silver, its cousin? Is, I mean, the chart doesn't really look as close as it does to gold. I mean, then again, it's really not quite the trading vehicle that GLD is either. So. All right, it's really just a, you know, the tail that, of the dog that wags every now and then. So um, at this point, you could say it tried to put in a bottom and it just came off that low. If you go to SLV, you will see that you know, it, it did like one of those breakdown failures where it broke below and then gapped above and then continued. This also has a few different trend lines here. You know, one of them becoming right into this 28. So it's hard to buy, you know, right into 28 the first time it gets there, especially since it, it's coming from sub 26. I would say here the same thing. If it can go sideways and tighten up a little bit right around there, you will see a bit more commitment to it. So same way it gapped up here, went sideways and went. You want to see it hold right in front of this trend line and then have some power through. And if that's the case, then maybe we see 30, 37. But we'll see how it reacts to today's headline with the ECB only doing a quarter versus a half. All right. Well, it should be interesting action nonetheless. We're going to jump into a quick commercial. And when we come back, we dive into the trenches. Hello, everybody. My name is Pete Renzulli, Chief Marketing Officer of T3Live.com and one of the traders in the active mentor room for T3 Trading Group. What I'd like to do today is I'm really, really excited about introducing you to and inviting you to the first T3 Live Active Trader Summit which in New York City, which is on Saturday, July 14th. We're going to have quite a few speakers today. There's going to be myself, Mike Lee, Evan Lazarus, Mark Sperling, Rob Smith, Rick Meadows. There's going to be a ton of great content, but the number one reason you want to come is you want to be able to network and associate with other like-minded people like myself. I'm going to pump you up. I'm going to guarantee you that. Other people like yourself who have a burning desire to learn how to be a trader. So I'm going to ask you to make a trade. Trade one Saturday for some of your time to come down and learn strategies, tactics, techniques, and put some faces to the people that you see in the virtual trading floor in T3 Live and learn to take your trading bigger. Learn how to be a better trader than you are now. Learn the strategies. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't stress that. I know it's a Saturday, but you know what? I want you to be there to get excited and to be here. Prove to yourself how bad you want it. Show up and come down and get excited with us. Saturday, July 14th. Now, very quickly for the registration. All you have to do is register at t3live.com or be an existing member of t3live.com and you get two complimentary admission tickets for free. So all you have to do is go to t3live.com and register. If you would like to join us at the post-event cocktail reception, you can also upgrade to either premium or VIP. That's up to you, but either way, please take advantage of the general admission, two free tickets, bring a friend, bring a neighbor, bring a wife, bring a girlfriend, maybe bring both, but come down and expect to have a great time. Saturday, July 14th, here in New York City. 
Welcome back to the Morning Call. We're going to dive into the trenches and take a look at some of our IPO names. And yes, the market has completely dried up. But before we get into our ticker, Scott, how do you typically trade IPOs out of the bat? Well, we talk about the, the, the art of the first day mm -hmm. to see where the demand and the supply is. So typically what we like to do is we like to watch the IPO open up. So what that does is it creates an opening print. And then within the first half an hour, typically you pull off that opening print because everyone involved in the deal that gets out, all the flippers get out, all the free money people get out. And then typically if you could put a pivot low in in the first half an hour or so, if the deal is any good and there's demand from the street, it trades above that opening print and then typically close on the highs. You get a few days out of it. It's a good trade. And then you come back to it. But if it doesn't get above that opening print and you see more sellers than buyers, you run for the hills. You wait a few weeks, wait for a chart pattern to set up and then you get involved and that's much more strategic. All right. Well, let's kick it off with Facebook because what's going to be key here is their first earnings report. I believe they report July 26th. Just double check me on that date. But what we're going to be looking for is uh, unique visitors and revenue growth numbers. Those are going to be the two key components that you're going to want to focus on. So I'm curious to see how they trade this up into right. the actual print. It's funny, they're Look already out. saying unique visitors, so right. they know that the earnings and the revenues aren't going to right. be great. I mean, expectations <laughs> are like zero. But. Exactly. But you know, this IPO actually falls into the category of how you could have stayed out of trouble. Because I remember the way it opened up on you know first day of trading, it, the opening print was somewhere around 41, 42, pulled into like 38, held the IPO price, tried to come back and then failed. So it wasn't wor worth your attention, but then it created a better trade. So if you go to the chart, I'll show you what I'm talking about. You know, here is that opening print, and look what happened. It closed on the dead lows. So once it closes on the dead lows, it shows you so much damn supply, you get out of the way. Next day, you had a gap down. Really didn't show you much. And then the third day, down again. Then finally, it started consolidating. But what did it create? A bear flag. So here's your pull. Here's your flag. Here's your continuation. Here is the first time it tried to show you an outside reversal day and failed. You know, you could have tried it, probably made money intraday as it you know, cleared above the pivot here of 27.86 and closed strong, but then it worked lower. Well, finally, another outside reversal day, which we all know the name of this strategy, right, Joe? What is that? Red dog. <laughs> Red dog reversal. There you go. <laughs> this yes. one's for you, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And what that does is it trades below a previous price, gets people out of, you know, or gets stopped out, and then it comes back up. And that's exactly what we saw here. So if you didn't get screwed in the deal, or if you didn't try and just cost average and wind up you know, pulling your hair out and getting out of the way, here's your strategic way to buy it. So you bought it right here. You know, when it went back above 25.75, the low here was 25.52, so you like a 20 cent stop. And then you wind up having more energy added right above 28.10 went to 34 or so. So here you go. This was like a, a nine point trade with the 20 cent risk if you trailed it. Then here it did break this small little ascending channel. So this was your way out. If you were trailing, it was the first time it made a lower area. So when it broke below 31.55, but now it's kind of going sideways. It's holding higher. You had a small green day. It's not leading the market, but I would say if you're in it as a trader, I'm long some. My stop right here is 30.55. I think for it to continue to the upside, it's got to clear this little area, and that's right around 31.75 for continuation. And then you have obviously the pivot here, which is 33.44. So, you know, a good, horrible IPO, but a, a good tactical trade so far. All right, moving along to Groupon. This is another oh. one that just can't get out of its way below the 880 level. Seriously, guys, we're going to need a Groupon to actually buy the stock. That was <laughs> cheesy, but. Bottom line is it is really trading below the, some key levels that we look at. So is it a buy here or do you just kind of stay away from this one? This one was just gross. You've had, you've had some <laughs> trades here and it also shows the strategy mm -hmm. of the first day. So if you look at the chart here, you'll see that here you go. This was the first day. Here's your opening print. It did nothing but go lower. So right there that showed you it wasn't worthy of your attention. Then it tried to you know, create an upper level flag right here. And up. This was that base then couldn't get anywhere. Look at this horrible day. Look what this did. You know, went through the prior high, boom, engulfed this entire lower range. So what would that lead to? Led to a big move lower. Then you had to bounce back. This I remember we were trading. It looked decent, you know, flagged and then broke right. below. And then here you go. You had another decent little trade here, you know, came back above it and then broke below. And then really your last macro exit was when it broke this pivot here. Once it broke this pivot here of 1485, you take your ruler, you go across, this was your stop. Okay, and then you went lower. Remember that earnings day? I remember it gapped mm -hmm. up here. Everyone on, a, I won't name the show, got really excited saying you should be buying it here. It failed, tried to flag, went lower, and now look where we are. And so, then you had the Facebook thing come out. And yeah, it's just, you know, at this point, 
if you got stuck in it, you know, call your broker <laughs> or, right. or, or change. I mean, the IPO market, they had a really tough time with the social media names. I, you know, I guess it's different than those business models versus something like a Dunkin' Donuts where it's a little bit more tangible, if you will. There's right. like an actual product there. And this one, it, and it, you know, maybe that proves the case. It's up 16.8% since it IPO'd. So maybe we're talking about Dunkin' Donuts? Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin Donuts yeah. Yes, Dunkin' Donuts. I've been pounding the table many mm -hmm. times on that. And it shows you that like, there's times to buy things and times not to. And I think this has the ingredients to be a macro long within your portfolio. We talked about it many times. You know, um, Dunkin' Donuts has nice ingredients. Anyway, <laughs> um, if you look here, uh, short term, it's, I would say, a tiny bit testy right now. Okay, so, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, say anything because if you're a macro holder, it's fully fine. You know, we talked, the first time we really talked about the pivot here was to be a buyer right above this level, right above this, what was this, about 3010. And then again, when it cleared this uh, IPO high, and then it had its secondary, absorbed it, had a nice move. And, and now it came back in, you know, some of the actual food stocks have come in under play, like whether it's CMG, Panera, blah, blah, blah. P.S., you know, it has a small inside range here. Um, I didn't like the fact that it came in and retested this last breakout of 34 and had a small bounce, but then it, it engulfed it pretty quickly. So to me, short term, if, you, if you're just a trader, not, you know, not in this, it, it doesn't look like it's that viable right now. I guess if it were to get back underway in motion to the upside, it would have to get above this um, 3467 pretty quick. But if it starts to break below this little flag type area, the next real level of support doesn't come into 31, and then the 200 day is down here. So at this point, mm -hmm. if you're a macro investor, just be in tier one. You had some of your chances to be in tier two. Here's tier one, tier two. Here's tier one, tier two. You know, hopefully sell into some strength. But back to tier one, because just in case, you know, we do see some downside into this mega support here, right in that area. All right, and let's wrap it up with one of my favorite products, by the way, Michael Kors, one of our favorite stocks as well. Actually, if for those of you on Options, Profits, and Real Money, if you put Kors or DNKN in the ticker search, Scott and I did two special videos specifically on IPO trading. If you want some more real-time case studies, don't forget to check those out because I think we, you know, we've yeah. traded Dunkin' Donuts and Kors really, really well. Using. Yeah, well, those, I think it was Dunkin' Donuts, Kors, mm -hmm. and also LinkedIn. Those right. are my three IPOs that I said more than just a trade you mm -hmm. could probably own for the longer term they have the ingredients to be big winners like a visa like some of the others that have mm -hmm. small floats that have exciting business models that can continue it higher and look at cores cores unbelievable i remember i think we were talking about this here on the show um somewhere in this area i'm not exactly sure right before it broke out okay and it had a nice one this was when it broke out above this uh, 2750 continued all the way up and then obviously after a big move you know it has to somewhat consolidate it and if you look here they've done a few secondaries they've gotten rid of some stocks some of the insiders still held this big guy up here um, it's above the moving averages uh, you have some resistance right here it's starting to flag a little bit again I don't see a, a great trade here for a trader but as, as an investor I still think it looks good I think the business model like you said if mm -hmm. you love it I'm, I'm sure other girls love it you <laughs> fabulous taste there Jill so um, Pivot wise, here it is, uh, 4450 above that, it can get back to the highs. And I think, you know, you've had a nice multi month base here above this gap that at some point it should go again with a better market. Hmm. Interesting, the IPO market showing that investors are willing to pay for stuff like a Dunkin' Donuts, like a course. So, moving along to quick hits for quick cash, we're going to focus on a couple names that Scott and I have spoken about, not only on T3, but have been on TV, giving our short and long term thesis in terms of how you can have a longer term holding or short for that matter, and how to trade it in between. So let's go back and circle around with IBM. IBM is one of those names that's had a really great run, and not only are we liking it for the money that we've made over the past year, but we're also getting paid with that healthy dividend and the company doing some share buybacks. Yeah, I think IBM, there's been a, a time and place for a trader. I know mm -hmm. that in the first quarter, I, I was long it the entire time. I had some nice breakouts. And since then, it's been somewhat choppy. So as an investor, it really hasn't told you you have to leave. It hasn't stayed below the 200 day for a long time period to get you really worried. But because of the European exposure, because of the public sector exposure with the, both are constricting, it's, it hasn't just been on its horse, you know, running along for uh, the finish line. But if you look here, you know, it's still acting well. It, every time it came to the 200 day, it bounced off. Um, I would say, you know, it, it has a, a small little downtrend in place. Every time the market bounces, it wants to. So at least it's still showing, you know, relative strength with the market or, or at least in line. Here's your small little downtrend. Short term, I would say uh, one 
94, 91 should hold as long as this holds. Yeah, you know, you have the case that it could continue again. You know, any, you know, anytime IBM's about, what is this, uh, 14 points off the highs, it makes sense to buy the dip there. Again, here, if you're in tier one, you're looking for a trade, here it is, but then I would sell some and, and just be a bit careful here because, right. again, they have a, a quarter coming up. You know, some of these, I, I do think some of these companies are going to have a problem with the quarter, especially right. if they have European exposure and the public sector I exposure. Mean, it, expectations for the quarter isn't really that great anyway. So you better be able to really, really beat, like we saw in December, the last uh, quarter of last year, we saw that same sort of theme where you really, really had to grow on the bottom line, not just make it via cost cuts. But let's move along to my 2012 pick, Mosaic. We've been saying this since November 2011. We know we were going to see some Q1, Q2 choppiness. Now the charts are showing exactly what we've been talking about. The thesis is starting to play out. Everything is starting. All, the fire and run all cylinders is what these ag names are doing. Mosaic, past two weeks, it's been a real superstar. I still think we go to 65. What yeah. are the charts telling you? Well, again, after the first and second quarter choppiness, it, it made sense to gear up and start really focusing mm -hmm. on that tactical entry if you weren't sitting in there in a tier one. You know, waiting for that ignition, waiting for that pattern. And again, I, say, I hate to say red dog reversal, but we, we use this tactic because it's a way to right. enter a stock and, and do it tactically where you know your risk. And if you look here at the chart of Mosaic, you don't get much more textbook than this. That I think. June 4th number. Yeah, That's all right here. I think that uh, it did it on purpose because it knows that me and Jill love the strategy so much. Okay, so here it is. It broke below the low, came back up. So what did that do? It stopped people out who had a, a, a stop at the low. Anyone shorting it for more follow through to the downside got caught. And then what happened this time is you saw a spirited move. It closed strong. You had a day and a half move for a day trader. And then it went up three days in a row. And anyone who said, oh, it's mosaic, you know what? It's not going to hold up. You know what? It did. It held up on that third day and then created that W type pattern where you have the, this one, boom, boom, boom. Here's your resistance or trend line, the lower level trend line. So here's another additional trade. Had a nice move came back, retested, and look where it is right now. So if you now take a bit of a macro look here, you know, as it starts approaching, you know, some bigger resistance, you will see there will be some resistance that comes into play coming into this zone, okay, which could look how, you know, look, look at this move we just right, had here. Right. So, you know, if you want to sell some into this area, I think that's cool. But on a pullback, um, I think it's viable. You buy this thing, there's no reason why I think your target you said is 65 and I think it's attainable. So here is, you know, part one and two of the move. Now maybe this will be three and four. It's just your most basic supply and demand story, especially with the drought that we're seeing in key global growth regions in terms of farming. Weather's been horrific. I mean, it's not great for the farmers. Obviously, you don't want to predicate your trades on that. But input, fertilizer, you know, there you the go. base case is right there. Let's go to a short that we were talking about, J.C. Penney. The key question you have to ask yourself here, guys, is just because it's cheap relative, does it mean that it's a unique opportunity? I still think sentiment is completely negative on this name. I don't see any near-term catalysts. We have same-store sales today. I'm not sure if the number printed yet, but I can't imagine it's going to make its comps from last year when it hasn't been able to prove anything for the past seven months. Yeah, this, this has been nothing but a sell. They tried to get excited when the guy from Apple came mm -hmm. over and they sold that. And I think any time that guy's on my floor, like, oh, J.C. Penney is getting a move. You know, every time I chased it, I lost money. And every time you shorted the rally, you made money. And if you look where it is right now, it's always a bit dangerous <laughs> shorting a stock after it comes from 42 all the way down to 21.88. So I don't think potentially, you know, you could be shorting it with any type of size down here. You know, but uh, if you're trying to be long and you're trying to be short, here's your level. This is uh, the floor that it's trying to hold. You know, this is at 2150 going across. Maybe you see a red dog reversal where it puts a bottom in, but if you don't see that in the trades below, you get out of the way. Then you have this downtrend that's controlling it, this last level downtrend. So it's got to really have to start getting above this uh, mm -hmm. 23, 2350 for it to retrace any of this downside move. So for me, as a trader, I don't like going after the juice of a move. You know, I would think if you want it to be shorted, here was your spot to be shorted. If you want it to be shorted again, you know, here it rallied up and then broke this pivot and continued lower. At this spot, I just think that uh, you know, any, any whisper of a takeover rumor or this or that right. is just going to get you out of your position. So I just Private think, equity. Private yeah. equity loves these names. Let's wrap it up with Apple, one of our favorite names to trade. We actually touched that 600 level, which we haven't done in a while. Options activity on Monday and Tuesday. We were very active in the 600 strike. Don't, remember, uh, don't forget, guys, we also have earnings on July 24th. So we're going to see a lot of activity into that print. 
Yes, and you know it's been a great trading vehicle, and it's been also a great investment. So mm -hmm. <laughs> you have bang for the buck both different ways. I still think that the price doesn't show how devalued it is. People think, oh, it's at 600. You know, it's a lofty. No way. The 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 PE here is is less than the S and P 500, and obviously the mm -hmm. growth in Apple is a lot more than the combination of all those companies. But they need to split the stock to get that out of the way. But anyway, you know, message to Tim Cook: split your damn stock. Anyway, back to the chart, you go to Friday's action, okay? Here was that small descending trend line there. This is when, you know, you actually made some money methodically to the short side. You know, you've had a lot of little tactical trades ever since it broke this little, you know, the 100 day, remember when we were on with Kramer. And since then, it's just been a tactical trade, both long and short. This doesn't look like much, but there's like 25 point ranges in here. Mm -hmm. So the last one was when it broke above this a 574, and then we listed it at a 584, and now we closed around 600, it's up a little bit. So I would say tactically, you're gonna see probably guys, it's up $2 or something pre-market, probably try and short it. I think you can make a little cute money to the short side. I would say I'd rather see you buy a pull in here if we do get some, you know, some downside in the indices considering that we're at plus 80, plus 85 on the oscillator. Here's your next level of resistance coming in. Here's like, you know, I would say, what is this? This is like 613 to 614. So if they wanted to take the shorts to the cleaners that started early, we could go as high as that. But overall, stocks are macro long. Mm -hmm. And then tactically, you could just trade it. You know, it's been a great three-day trade from the long and the short side. And one of these times, it's going to get up and go. And obviously, it's going to need those earnings to do so. All right, everybody. Have a great day trading. Remember, guys, keep it nice and tight and stay nimble because we have a lot of big headlines coming out in a very thin market. Catch Scott and the team at the end of the day every day on Real Money, Options, Profits, and T3Live.com.